Attorney General asking for you on 9-0. All right. Just one second. He'll be on the phone. Thank you. Bobby? How are you? Fine. I was just talking, uh, Mr. President, to uh, Mac Bundy on the phone. I mm -hmm. heard of this, uh, this incident of last night, mm -hmm. and I asked him if the uh, congressional people had been informed about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, he didn't think that they probably had. No. And, uh, you know, it's going to come out from the Chinese, and it's going to come out in other ways. And yeah. I thought it was rather a matter that would be well if it was handled. Yeah, and I think so. Some of them have been, but... Uh, uh, it hasn't been done as a group, yeah. and exactly. I don't know whether the Republicans would uh, bring it out and leak it or not. That's a great question. But of course, the Chinese will talk about it, and the yeah. Russians will talk about it, and it's going to be, a, you know, it's going to. I would, I would think you can expect that it's going to be a, within 24 hours. It'll be worldwide, and if we had done it without telling anybody in the United States, uh, they're all going to wonder. You know, I, I would think that that's going to be a problem. The second thing is, it seems to me that. Somebody should be working on how it will be handled with the public, because the Chinese obviously will say something about it. And what are we going to say, and and then and what the and whether we repeat it. And I, I raised that question with them, and I've got another meeting at one o'clock where I'll raise it again. Uh, uh, they, uh, the the Boyne State Department, uh, and McNamara both have had that question put to them by me. Uh, uh, what's the man over there that runs their publicity? Uh, uh, Where? In, this no, in state. Uh, Manning? Manning. He's uh, a good man. And I, I think he's been one of the best. Yeah. His feeling was that we shouldn't uh, do anything about it. My feeling was that we ought to uh, uh, go ahead and say something. McNamara agreed with him. I would I'm seeing you. I'm seeing them at 1 o'clock again, and we took the ball the other day and said that we had taken this uh, action and announced it ourselves, and I thought it got by with, pretty well with the other two flights. Uh, it doesn't look like they got much results last night, what they did. Have you analyzed it? I haven't. I just, uh, you know, I just heard about it on the telephone. But, uh... Are you going to meet with them any time today or tomorrow? I hadn't heard of it. Uh, I told, uh, Mac Bundy to get you because we've got to see where we go from here. Yeah. What, what, uh, they, they have no real, uh, no. plans. Uh, McNamara and, uh, Rusk are both, uh, we're rather insistent on going through with this one, although the ambassador raised some grave questions which concern me, A, uh, the reaction in the world, and B, uh, Savannah's uh, reaction. But uh, they felt that unless we showed some strength and made some kind of reply that uh, uh, it would uh, be very bad for us. And we went ahead, but they were confident they could knock this battery out. They didn't, and I think it shows us uh, so we can't rely too much on air power on no. some of these things. No, I think that's a real lesson. The other, I had, uh, you know, they about four or five days ago, uh, we went through the plan for Vietnam, and I had some serious questions about it, that, uh, that, uh, that perhaps they're going to have some other discussions with you. But, I mean, for instance, the congressional part of it and getting the congressional... Uh, uh, resolution, I think, it poses all kinds of problems. If we're yeah, well, you that. can't do anything about that until uh, until you get rid of this problem we've got up there now. And the question is whether you uh, you ought to try is a difficult one. And I don't know how you can conduct uh, much offensive without some authority. Yeah. Uh, we had the United Nations behind us, but we had a very divided country and a lot of hell, and we finally really lost. The Democrats did on the Korea thing. Yes, yeah, right. uh, I. I'm fearful that if we move without any authority of the Congress, that uh, the uh, the resentment would be pretty widespread and would involve a lot of people who would normally be with us if we asked for the authority. On the other hand, I would shudder to think uh, if uh, 
Uh, they debated it for a long period of time, and they're likely to do that. Yes, uh, so their choice is very good. No. I think that the, uh, they'll start asking, uh, it seems likely, that they'll start asking somebody to spell out exactly what's going to happen. And if you, we drop bombs there and then they retaliate, will we eventually bomb Hanoi and all that kind of business. And what the answers to that, to those questions, are so difficult to give, uh, particularly if uh, you're giving it to a lot of people, they're antagonistic. All right, now if you don't, uh, that, that's all true. Yeah. And you can't go into the details of your no. plans, and you just have to tell them that. But if you take the other route, well, the other then they ask you, by what authority, what executive order do you declare war? Yeah. The other, uh, well, I guess the, you really don't need, uh, uh, the, from their explanation at least, and I haven't looked into it, but it's not essential that it's, this, it's not necessary constitutionally. But uh, the alternative to that, especially if that's going to be very harmful, the alternative, of course, is to, for you and Secretary McNamara and Secretary Russ at the appropriate time to start bringing in the labor leaders and the business leaders and the congressional leaders and and talk with them on, you know, sort of as if it was a National Security Council meeting and and uh, that you were briefing them and this is what we have to do at this time and that if you have to take any further steps that you'll inform them and that you'll keep them advised and uh, and rally and bring in some of the newspapers and bring in some of the television people. And I think probably talk to the country about uh, yeah. why we're there and how we're there and what uh, we're confronted there and what we may do before you submit a resolution, because I don't, uh, I have doubts about what happened to it right now. Well, that's what I think. Yeah. I think you just uh, talk and develop a big uh, divided type here at home. That's what I think. And then the be pe some people will say we're not doing enough. To be others will say it's too much. To be some people saying, you know, uh, all you need is 15 of them up there that are doing that. And I think it's just unless the ground's laid, is really to be unfair. Does this uh, jury amendment bother you any this morning? No, I think it makes it much more difficult, but hell, we can live with it. Does mm. it help you any on cloture? Yes. Mm. yes. You think cloture is decided now, don't you? It looks that way. Mm. It certainly appears that way. It'd be just a miracle getting this bill. I mean, who could have thought a year ago that we'd get this bill? Well, it'll be a wonderful thing. Now, are you gonna, you're making your plans on who we ought to call in to yes. follow through on it? Yes, we are. Now, should we do that but between the time it, uh, it goes from the Senate to the House and by the time we sign it? Or should we wait after we sign it? I think probably uh, the, at least the feeling has been to wait till after we sign it. All right. Now, you may give thought to that because we could move when yes. the Senate messages yes. it over to the House because it's a pretty foregone conclusion That's right. then. That's right. I assume, though, that the Rules Committee will hold hearings for a while and try to delay it, won't they? I guess so. The I Republicans are committed enough, though, they'll give you a rule, yes, won't they? Yes, that's right. Uh, that's right. Okay, now, Smith, Stennis wants to see me about politics in Mississippi. I assume it's about this Marshall. Have you already gone well, ahead and him? Uh, yes. Well, I then think I think we ought to go into him with him, all this stuff you told me. You know what you think so? That'd be fine. The other problem he wants about the judge, Mr. President. Oh, what's uh, the Fifth Circuit? Yes. And well, they want to have a judge from Mississippi, and we're still looking into it. It's awfully tough, you know, to get somebody down there would be acceptable. If we don't find somebody acceptable, they won't confirm him. I, no, I, uh, the only thing is that you take him from another state. What I did was uh, that old Fifth Circuit uh, member that uh, Roosevelt appointed Allred, who had been a federal judge, and resigned to the circuit court several years after he resigned, or several months. And uh, there's been a Louisiana vacancy. And Ellender took the position that uh, is really Louisiana's place in the Senate to... Uh, stood behind him and overrode uh, Roosevelt. Mm. Now, you may have another situation like that in Mississippi, uh, unless we got the race thing in it, unless we just said, well, because civil rights, we've got to go outside the state. You might get the northern people to support you and not re recognize this individual yeah. uh, loyalty to the state. They t he said, uh, Stennis said to me that he'd take Coleman. Well, Coleman won't have it, though, no. I understood. I'd be for Coleman. Yeah, I know. Of course, that would be... Uh, I mean, if Coleman, at least, you could get Coleman to do it for a few years anyway, you know, well, get, get us all beyond Do you think we ought to try to do that? Well, he'd be fine, you know, he'd be acceptable, and uh, that would be, uh, that'd be and I think it's going to be awful tough to take would, anybody else. Would Eastland take uh, Coleman? Well, Stennis said he'd take Coleman, so I... Said he would, yeah. or uh, both of them would. 
Well, the way he talked it was that Coleman would be fine. He said, it's my appointment, and the first person I wanted was Coleman. All right, okay, if it's his appointment, that would just be fine with me, because I think he's a good person. Yeah, very. I heard the president offer him the Secretary of the Army, and he just said he couldn't do it because he hadn't been in the Army, yeah, and he wouldn't do it. I thought was very noble. Yeah. Okay, I sure want you to get with these fellas. I tell them every day, and I want you and uh, uh, if they're having any meetings this afternoon after uh, 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 or in the morning. Uh, Mac Bundy told me this morning that they were going to have executive meetings until Thursday and come in with some recommendations on Thursday. And I'll get back in touch with him. Yep, can, I, can I give you one other? Oh, yeah, FBI. I talked to them. Oh, uh, yes. And they said they'd get us report in by the oh, first, and I, I followed the line uh, in your memo. Yeah, well, that's terrific. Uh, the other person, uh, Mr. President, who's got some sense on these matters is, uh, uh, you know, again, none of us are always right, but who's got some sense or is, and has had a good deal of experience is Douglas Dillon. So yes, I told him that. I told him that every day. Yeah. Okay. Fine, Mr. President.